gaseous exchange in men. Lungs are the main respiratory organs in humans. They lie in the upper chest cavity. Today, we will take a trip with air as it enters our body during inhalation and comes back out during exhalation. Air enters our body through the nostril, nasal passages, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, and bronchioles. Before entering the alveoli, the air enters through the nostril, where projecting nasal hair filters out dust and debris and bacteria, thus preventing infection. Air then enters into the nasal cavity, where the blood vessels below the epithelium warm it. Air then goes on to the pharynx, which warms, moistens, and filters air, and then to glottis, which is open at all times, except when swallowing. After passing through larynx and trachea, which traps debris and sweeps it upwards towards the mouth, it goes via bronchus and finally enters the lungs. The lungs are rich in blood supply and an active site of gaseous exchange. The left lung consists of two lobes, while the right one consists of three. Each lung is enclosed within the pleural membrane. Below the lungs, a set of muscles called diaphragm changes volume to assist breathing. Inside the lungs, the bronchus divides into smaller tubes called bronchioles. The bronchiole attaches to alveoli at each of its ends. Alveoli are air sacs with thin walls and moist surfaces. A network of blood capillaries covers alveoli. Oxygen from the air diffuses into the blood supply, passing close to each alveolus in the lung. Carbon dioxide is diffused back to the alveoli as waste. The alveoli have a fascinating structure, well adapted for gaseous exchange. It is not only lined with a network of capillaries to assist diffusion, but also have a large surface area to allow an increased rate of diffusion and moist surface that allows gases to dissolve before diffusion occurs. The walls of alveoli and blood capillaries are only one cell thick so that diffusion is fast. There is also a short distance between alveoli and capillary so that diffusion occurs easily. What happens during breathing? The process of breathing involves inhalation and exhalation, also known as inspiration or expiration. During inspiration, external intercostal muscles contract, ribs swing upwards and outwards, diaphragm contracts and flatten down. In turn, there is an increase in the volume of the thoracic cavity. The increase of volume in the thorax cavity reduces air pressure in the cavity and lungs. Gases inside the lungs expand to fill in available space. This forces air into the lungs. The amount of oxygen during inspiration is 21%, carbon dioxide 0.1%, nitrogen 79%, moisture, dust in variable quantities, and the temperature of the air is around 20 degrees Celsius. The amount of oxygen during expiration is 17%, carbon dioxide 4%, nitrogen 79%, saturated with water vapor, without dust, and the temperature of the air has now increased to 37 degrees Celsius. It is interesting to note here that from the 21% entering the body, only 4% of the oxygen is diffused into the bloodstream. The rest is exhaled out. However, the amount of nitrogen remains the same during inhalation and exhalation, showing that nitrogen does not involve in the gaseous exchange process. During expiration, internal intercostal muscles contract, ribs swing downward and inward, and the diaphragm relaxes and elevates. There is a reduction in the volume of the thoracic cavity. A reduction in the thoracic cavity volume increases air pressure. This forces air out of the lungs to the atmosphere. Inside our brain, the respiratory center is located in the lower medulla oblongata. The stimulus for the respiratory center is the presence of carbon dioxide. When carbon dioxide level increases, breathing rate increases as well. When we are anxious or angry, the adrenaline hormone increases metabolic rate and breathing. If the levels of carbon dioxide drop excessively, it inactivates the respiratory center and this could lead to death.